The next thing that we want to do is we want to make this transparent. So we are going to roll back up here to our tags uh, and we want to change what is the default render type, which is opaque. And so instead of opaque, as perhaps you have guessed, we are going to change it to transparent, but that's not all. We are also going to add in the following. We're gonna set the Q to transparent. Now what this means is when we're rendering transparent things, the order in which things are rendered matters, right? Because in order to draw something transparent, meaning on top of other things, the other things have to be rendered first, right? So basically we need to specify the queue. We need to say this goes into the transparent queue. Here we have the rendering order queue tag, right? That's what we're using here. And there are four predefined render queues. Um, and basically we have the background, which is rendered first, right? Usually, usually the skybox or solid color. We have the geometry, which is where our opaque geometry goes. Alpha test, this is anything that is going to be um, alpha tested that we wanna place after all solid objects. And then transparent, which will be rendered after geometry and alpha test in back, in back to front order, anything alpha blended, i.e. shaders that don't write to the depth buffer uh, should go here like glass or particle effects. And then if we want to overlay anything on top of that, like for, exa for example, lens flares or UI type elements, HUD stuff that always gets rendered on top of everything else, that'll be rendered on the uh, overlay layer. So we need to specify these two tags and we also need to add the Z right off keyword here, which is gonna tell us not to render to the depth buffer. And I will just, I'm not gonna go deep into all of these concepts, but basically you can check out, there's a whole page on um, culling and depth testing. And basically here is the section we're interested in. Uh, you can set Z right to on or off. Controls whether pixels from this object are written to the depth buffer, default is on. If you're drawing solid objects, leave this on. If you're drawing semi-transparent effects, switch to Z right off. For more details, read below. I'll leave that up to you guys. Uh, but just suffice to say, we are going to uh, not write to the depth buffer for our transparent object. And then lastly, we need to choose how these pixels are gonna be blended. So we're gonna blend uh, using source alpha and one minus source alpha. And again, I'm just gonna point you, um, so here's the page on blending, right? It's got more info, but basically if we look all the way down here, we can choose from a list of blend factors, right? Um, and this is basically just saying, render these things um, in order, and then at a certain point, we're gonna need to blend them all together, and how are we going to do that, right? So in this case, we're saying we're gonna blend them using the alpha channel. We need to add another line to our fragment function. And what we're gonna do is we are going to set call.a, the alpha, of our color that we're creating here, right? So we're getting the RGB colors from the texture and the tint, and the alpha is going to be based on a public property that we're gonna create now. So this is going to be a new public property that we're gonna call transparency. This is going to be a float and we'll set it to equal 0 to 5. Note that we're not using an F here, um, as we wouldn't see sharp. And you know what, I'm not gonna make this a float. I'm going to make it a range between 0, 0.0 and 0, 0.5. Uh, and I'll explain why in a moment. Um, basically, we can get into some weird issues if we set the alpha too high. So we're gonna limit it uh, to a range, and we can see how that displays in the editor, that'll give us a nice uh, 
range slider here in the inspector. And you can see our lovely pink error shader because I didn't finish writing the shader before I showed it to you. So we have our transparency variable. That's going to be a floating point number between 0 and 0 0.5. We need to add it down here, right? So this is just going to be a regular float called transparency. And then here, we're just going to say call.a is equal to transparency. So we're setting the alpha of our color to be a number between 0 and 0 0.5, which is going to be uh, semi-transparent. So let's save that. Jump back over to Unity. And ta-da! Let's go into play mode so we can see it rotating. Look at that. Beautiful. It's beautiful. So one thing that you can get is you can get into some weird uh, ordering issues. If you set the alpha too high, you can have stuff that's supposed to be drawn behind, drawn in front. Um, and that's one of the reasons why we clamp that range, because we can see parts of his body through himself like at that moment. Um, and so this gives us our core of our shader, right? We have this kind of self-illuminated looking semi-transparent um, sort of hologram style shader. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add our movement, moving uh, glitches to it and glitching the vertices um, and clipping out some of the pixels. And we're going to do that in the next segment. I see Piflik is talking about grab pass shaders. If you want to see a shader that uses a grab pass, look at the invisible shader that's shipped here. And actually, if you check out that Amplify Shader Editor training, that shader, because it does this refraction thing, it needs to grab a texture of the screen. That uh, uses a grab pass as well. Uh, yeah, somebody's asking about the number of properties in a shader, and if they're unused, does it affect performance? Actually, the standard shader is an interesting example of this because it's the kind of default shader for everything and it has a ton of fields. Um, basically, what happens is anything that is not getting used gets stripped out at compile time, I think. You'll notice that like you can't access properties of the shader that are not in use via script because they're actually stripped out. Jesse Lord asks, when you say blend via alpha, what does that mean? So alpha is a channel, effectively a color in our image that's in any, it could be an image file or in this case in a floating point number in a color. It's a number between zero and one. One is opaque and zero is completely transparent. So it's a, basically a channel used to represent transparency uh, in all kinds of computer graphics applications. Okay, let me just keep zipping along because I might actually finish before the hour is over, which would be pretty cool. Um, and then I'll come back and answer any questions that I can.